All right. Well, good morning, ladies. Thank you for coming to our um, breakfast cuppa. <laughs> That's what I'm calling it since I'm in my PJs. Um, but I just wanted to hop on. We've all had an amazing experience at conference. And, um, you know, for Janet and I, we're the only ones that have had more than one conference experience. But if I know anything, it's that so many things stir for you at a conference and a lot of things you could never expect you, know, you kind of get there and you just kind of i don't know sometimes you might have um, nervous feelings or trepidation even coming into conference or you might be ready to just play full out either way i think that something magic happens and no matter how you walked in the door you walk out a different person so what i really want to do this morning is just harness some of the feelings that we have um, around the excitement and what has possibly stirred in each of our hearts. And I think that if we can share that collectively, um, it's going to do a few things. It's going to just kind of make it more tangible for, for ourselves and we're going to put it out there. It's going to help us keep one another more accountable. And it's also a moment for coaching because not always everything that comes out of conference is rainbows and butterflies. Sometimes it's some hard stuff. And um, so when I had the wrap up with the Influencer Academy with Kate and Anthony, um, you know, it was a celebration, but we did, we went around the room and each person talked about what it was that stirred in their hearts and where they see themselves in the next 12 months. And I can promise you, I think it was 99% of people, there were tears. So, um, you know, please don't, feel like you need to reserve any of the emotions or hold back. Hey, Inika. Um, so a quick question, Inika, do you need to go first because you've got clients? Um, I, yeah, I'll start at um, 10 o'clock. So I probably need to be gone by 10, 10 to. Okay. Well, um, we might have someone else start first, just since you just hopped on so you can kind of just acclimate, but we're just basically sharing what stirred in our hearts at conference, um, just so that we can collectively support one another and just kind of help keep each other's dreams. Um, yep. And then the other thing is kind of the path that where we see ourselves in 12 months <clears throat> time. And really, I'd like to know that so that I can help you guys with that roadmap. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, if we've just had a dream and we don't have a plan, or we have an unrealistic goal, like it just doesn't really set us up for success. So um, is there anybody that kind of feels like they'd like to Go ahead and, and share first. I'll go. Awesome. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Now, my line is not really good, so I hope I don't keep We can hear you. You can yep, hear can. okay? Yep. Okay. Um, so for me, what really stirred for me was, um, and I think I heard this from a lot of people, was the realness. The rawness of, of um, that it's just not all smokes and mirrors, that it's not all glitz and glamour. Yes, of course, there is the success stories, but there's hardship and hard work to get you there. And where I, when I went to conference, I was just in that mindset of what am I doing wrong? I feel like this is, you know, there's something that I'm doing wrong here. And of course, there's always room to learn and grow, but it just made me feel like, it's okay. What I'm doing is what I need to be doing and it's okay. Um, and I've just got to keep at it and I've just got to keep the big picture and really refine my why and keep in touch with my why. I think that was what just it reinforced it for me, I think. So Carrie, just um, what, can you talk a little bit about your why? Um, yeah, I think, you know, th there are a few whys. There are a few whys. For me, um, I always need to feel financially independent, even though, you know, I have a supportive partner and, you know, we're a family unit. I always feel this desire to feel financially independent. Um, and I'm also acutely aware that my husband is quite a lot older than me. He's about to turn 60 next week. So I am very aware that retirement is looming for him. So in order for us to have a quality of life, I want to, you know, have that for us. I want to, and have the freedom to actually, you know, not have to be going to work full time in a job 
where he's going to be at home and we can't actually enjoy each other and enjoy family time and each other's relationships. So that's probably my big why. Yeah. And um, when you shared about just, you know, getting, getting your head around that, you know, everybody does kind of have a hard road in this and that it wasn't just you. Mm. Um, I'm just trying to think. And um, if anybody else has a good coaching um, question, and I'm going to look at you, Janet, because <laughs> you do unmute yourself and ask, but because I really want us to help one another and grow <clears throat> together. Um, you know, when you felt that you weren't alone, um, is there anything else that stirred in you or any other sort of, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but what, how did that empower you? What did, what, what was the gift in that for you? Um, you know, like it's the, the self-belief, the self-doubt, the self-worth, you know, all of that is kind of encapsulated in that because even though that's what I encourage in everyone around me, it's, it's the, the naggy voice as um, I can't, Mitch was Mitch, saying, you know. The lunatic. Yeah, it's there. The lunatic's there for all of us. And I am always the, the first person to put my hand up to support to nurture to love anyone around me but I am so tough on myself mm. you know really tough on myself mm. and um mm. here comes the tears mm. <laughs> but mm. yeah so it was just that mm. that it's okay that I'm okay that it's not me and I've just got to get out of my head a lot I'm a chronic head person and, um, you know, I just have to get out of my way. Mm. Yeah. Well, can I encourage you and probably every single person um, on the line and anyone that will listen to this to um, incorporate ways that you can get into a practice of affirming yourself and loving yourself? Mm. Um, because you are, you're an amazing woman and you, you really do have that ability to do for others what you really need to do for yourself. And it's a common thread. Like so many of us are really good at doing things for others, but we put ourselves last or we don't recognize ourselves. Um, you know, like, mm. like JT just said, you are enough. Mm. So I'd really encourage you to make that part of your daily. Mm. Self care is very much the forefront of what I do for myself. But I think it's that, that in a dialogue, it's that self talk the self-love rather than the self-care which I know it's the same thing but does that make sense like the yeah. nurturing supporting myself all yeah. of that I do I just don't yeah I just overthink things mm. yeah well we always we all know the same you've everybody's heard it um uh, now I'm gonna forget how to say it um, fear will take you out of action, but action will take you out of fear. Mm. So that's also part of that doubt thing. Um, and I hope that you're reading the chat cause you're getting some support yeah. from the girls, but, yeah, um, thank you. <laughs> think about how that can be something that's powerful for you and that you can bring into the next 12 months. Do you have mm. a place that you see yourself in 12 months time? In terms of the business? Yeah, that's, Absolutely. You know, I wrote it on the wall. Mm. Yeah. What did you write? I wrote, I wanted to be SSC. Beautiful. In 12 months time. I want to be on stage. I want to be, woohoo, there, mm. you know. Um, and, uh, but I want to do it with kindness and love. And so what is, what does that mean? Because um, Janet and I were talking earlier. Um, so I'm just going to meet you, Kate. Um, Janet and I were talking earlier about um, the things that motivate you. And so for some people, it is exciting. You know, you think about a title and you think, you know, that's mm. really amazing. Yeah. Um, but then the, for some people, that doesn't really drive them. Um, so what is it around becoming an SSC um, that excites you? Um, I think that it's just a benchmark. You know, if I don't, if I actually don't achieve it, it's not the end of the world. It's not a, a symbol of failure if I don't get there. It's just a benchmark to to keep my goals, to keep my why front of mind. So um, does that make sense? Like it's just about 
keeping me clear on where I want to be, you know, Mm -hmm. and I understand that sometimes on the path we head in a different direction or there's detours. I appreciate that. So I'm not so hell bent on actually necessarily having that title, but it's a goal. It's, It's somewhere that I can aim and strive for because sometimes I think if you don't have that, you can get so distracted. Well, it's very easy to get distracted. Yeah. How, I might just suggest, and we can think about this um, further later, mm. but if financial security is the goal, then maybe we really want to talk about what financial security means to you. And you might yeah. just have a think about that. Like you might not know it right now. Mm. Oh, Kate can't hear anything. That's weird. It's going to be on her end. You may have to um, go back out and sign back in, Kate. Um, I don't know. Maybe somebody could type that in the chat to Kate. Um, yeah, so Carrie, I, I, what comes to mind for me if, is if financial security is important to you, then maybe what we need to do is really reverse engineer okay. mm. what that looks like. Yeah. And then the title could be different titles <clears throat> because something to understand about this business is, you know, you've got people like, um, so you've got Shani, right? Shani's a 100 yeah. club. We know that yeah. she's raking in the dough. That's awesome. Yeah. Her mother is a QNMD and she's a 24 club. She's probably making the same as right. some NMDs, if not more than some NMDs, because she's 24 club. Right. So really what your business could look like yeah. is to have not so a much bunch of title. qualified yeah. you know, people under you. Mm. That will naturally get you to SC and it could develop into SSC. Mm. But SSC might not necessarily get you the financial mm. security. So we'll revisit that later, but I think that's an important thing for us to talk about. Yeah. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much. It's okay. Okay, guys. Um, I don't know if Kate's going to come back on. If she does, we might have to let her talk. But Inika, let's let you go because I don't want you to um, have to leave with, with, um, with work. So if you unmute yourself, go for it. I have unmuted myself. Um, <clears throat> I think what really struck me about the weekend was um, not so much the success of the people that got up on stage, but the sense of self that the people that got up on stage had. Um, the fact that they'd really sort of grown into um, a real acceptance of who they were and um, and and what they were doing with their life. Um, and my tears are going to start sooner than yours, Kerry. <laughs> um, but I suppose with all the stuff that's gone on for me in the last year, um, it was like, like there was that first grief of the loss of the marriage and, and the whole that sort of family brokenness. Um, but now there's a sort of second wave of grief that I'm kind of, working through which is the fact that I sacrificed myself for 20 years and so I never really practiced being who I am Um, I was just too busy being who I thought I needed to be for my family and my husband (laughs) and so my journey at the moment I think um, is more along the lines of just um, discovering who I am Mm -hmm. um, again (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, and and living it Um, so um, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at and, and that's been my week um, this week is, is really just kind of being confronted with that, um, that kind of realisation that, you know, I've, again, similar to you, Kerry, I've never really doubted myself. I've never really had that, that kind of, um, you know, I've always been really sure that I have worth and something to give and, and lots to give actually. Um, but, yeah, it's just kind of this new level of, of just trying to figure out what that looks like now in this new space um looking forward uh without the kind of things that I thought I was going to be looking people I was going to be looking forward with um so yeah so that's kind of where I'm at uh and uh so so yeah that was the thing that really struck me about the weekend and really obviously touched <laughs> my heart um I went to a um a, a workshop of a, a friend of mine who's doing a lot of coaching these days it's called get on track um just this week so, you know, these tears are in part because I've had such a huge week. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Um, but, yeah, he was, he was sort of really encouraging us to, to work through this process of identifying a goal and, and really getting real around it and, and writing it and picturing it. And like, similar to a lot of the stuff I talked about on the weekend as well. Um, <clears throat> but through that process and just in, in kind of, you know, thinking about my future, you know, there's... I, I, want to, I want to travel, you know. So one of the goals, my short-term goals, is to, to save three grand in three months. 
Mm. Um, so I can travel. Um, and, you know, at the moment, that's probably primarily going to come from my chiropractic business. Um, but I, I thought maybe a goal that I could have around the Juice Plus business would be maybe to do something like 12 grand in 12 months. Um, so, so that's kind of where I'm at. And so in order to do that, I need to get really clear on my why, which is, you know, still pretty kind of hazy just because it seems to change. Um, and, uh, and to do that well, and part of that picture also is to really get clear on a demo and, and just get committed to it because, you know, I, I can continue to give myself the space and the, um, the, the freedom to, to just live my life on my terms, which I need to do on many levels. But I think I also um, need to be a bit disciplined in some areas and start to sort of achieve that goal of, of actually ticking the box each day of what I know I've done. Yeah. That's me. Well, yeah, no. well, thank you, Inika, because I know I was with you last year in Perth and it is, you know, I've journeyed with you and um, I think, you know, when you get into a space that is so emotionally vulnerable, like conference is, and maybe for some people that's a shock, <clears throat> you know, you kind of think it's just going to be like a rah-rah, let's talk about Juice Plus, but, you know, we're all in the personal development business. And as we see every single person on stage, like our business can only grow as we grow. And, you know, obviously, um, like yourself and like Carrie and probably others on the line as well, you know, you have things in your life that you excel at and you have that confidence and, you know, chiropractic for you is an absolute gift and um, you touch people's lives every day. But to put yourself out there um, in this arena is a little bit scary. and. Um, you know, I know that you've shared with me that it's been a gift um, many times in this journey. And so I just think, you know, that this is all part of, this is all part of that next part of your life. And, um, you know, this community that's behind you to kind of journey with you and cheer you on. Um, Janet, I'm going to keep picking on you in case you have any good co coaching questions for Inika. But um so go ahead and unmute yourself if you do. But to touch on the, um, the goals that you have, I'm really excited um, that you've got some things that you are wanting to do and travel sounds amazing. Um, I'm just trying to think. I think Linda... You don't have to anymore because I've got to start working soon. Okay, right? okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm gonna be <laughs> gentle. It won't be hard. Um, <laughs> No, but I just think like Linda always says, um, if we're not having fun, we're not doing this right. And mm. I know that we can't have fun every single day, but how many people would agree that if we're having fun, um, we've got a different energy about ourselves and things happen in a different way. So, right. So I'm just trying to think about um, what we could do to make your DMO fun in terms of connecting your goal and your DMO together, something that would energize you. Go, JT. Okay. I think one of the ways that you can work out around this is figure out what your values are. Like, what are your top values? Mm -hmm. Because um, there's two things. One is what are your top values? And two is how do you want to feel? Because you can have a goal um, and it might not be the actual goal that's going to really be right for you because the reason we have goals is because we're chasing a feeling and the yep. feeling that we get from, from achieving the goal. So it's like, okay, get clear on what you, how you actually want to feel in order to then work backwards and go, okay, what is that goal? And in that, in that picture also work out what your values are. So what are your top values? So a good way to ask yourself, like figure that out if you've never done that exercise is, you know, what are the things that I, you know, read about? What are the, what are the things that I always prioritise over everything else? What do I fight to the death for? What couldn't I live without? Um, what do I always have money for um, when I don't have money for other things? That sort of will start to give you a bit of an idea of what you value most. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, in terms of the feelings. Okay. Driving it. It's in okay. terms of the feelings, there's a really good book. Um, there's a lady called Danielle Laporte who's written a book called The Desire Map. And um, she talks about all core desired feelings. And it's like, okay, figure out what those top feelings are for you 
And it's like, then how can I bring that into my every day to feel that? And then you can apply it to your business. How can I bring, so for me, connection is a really top value of mine. And I, and it's also a core desired feeling. I want to feel connected to people. And I think one of the things that I realized, I was like, now I've started doing live events. So like connection and community is so important to me, but I want to be able to see people and feel people like the energy of them. And like live events are just probably the thing that are going to do it for me because of that. Mm. And I hadn't been doing it. And I was like, oh my God, what have I been doing? Like, so it's like, how can I bring that more into my business and my everyday life so that then it does become more fun? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Danielle Laporte. Okay. Awesome lady. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, Janet, why don't you, since you, why don't you go ahead, unless, Inika, is there anything else that you want to, anything else that you want to say? Oh, no, I think, you know, that idea of having fun doing it is, mm. is a really important thing. Um, mm something that I've struggled with. So that, that's really helpful. Thank you. I'll yeah. meet myself and I'll have to go. Okay. But have a great time. I'll watch the rest later. Okay. Thanks, Inika. Bye. I think we forget to have more fun too. Oh, we totally do. It's, we can get really serious. Like if you're, yeah. especially if you're headed for a goal, like yeah. sometimes we get in our heads like, oh, I've got to get this. And, and yeah. when it becomes, I got to get, the wheels kind of fall off a little bit. Um, yeah. But anyway, I, um, I'd love for you to share um, one thing I wanted to say when you were sharing that is that, you know, you, I remember talking to you and you going, Oh, I don't know about my business. Like what's going on. It's just mm -hmm. me feeling really lost. And I remember yeah. saying like, you know, you need people, you actually need people around you. Like you need to not yeah. be this by yourself. Yeah. You need community. You need community. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, what stirred for you in conference? What, what stirred in your heart? Um, I think there's a few a few ones. One is staying close to the fire, which every time I go to an event, I always remember. <laughs> mm. I think staying in that community, like again, community and having fun is a big part of going to these events mm. um, and hanging out with people that are like-minded. That's really important for me. Mm. Um, and also, I guess I really enjoyed Shani's talk. Mm at the conference because it was so real and raw and vulnerable from mm. her. Mm. And I also really enjoyed Ant's wrap up as well, because I felt like he was a lot more vulnerable as well. Um, and talking about like shift, making that shift of setting a goal as, Oh, I want to get to, you know, like SSC or, you know, um, people going, oh, I want to get, I want to be an MD by the end of the year, but not realizing how much work that is mm -hmm. and shifting it to how many people do I want to help? Um, which that definitely, we, I mean, we were talking about it yesterday, just trying to like jot that out and, and connecting that to, you know, I think I had a guest, I had a guest that came Who's, she's very up and down. Like she came, you guys would have all met her, Liz. Mm. And some days she, she messaged me the other day, she's amazing and she sounded different. The next day she's like, I don't think I can do this. And then the next day she messaged me again and she's like all in again and I'm like, okay. But like seeing that someone who needs something, needs support so badly and needs help and I also know the financial struggles that so many people are going through um, is a really big one for me because so it's I, that shift of who can I help and really focusing on that, not just from a health point of view, but also from a, from a business point of view. Mm -hmm. I think that was probably my biggest and also like hearing more about the product and stuff and really re um, anchoring my belief in it um, really helped. Mm. And funnily enough, like I've had lots of people come out of the woodwork even since conference just because I've been so excited. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I just got to keep that in it. I just want to keep that energy going and, um, yeah, yeah. So what do you think that you can do um, – oh, I'm trying to think of the right question. 
like how do you think you'll be able to keep that kind of energy and that excitement and that enthusiasm um i definitely feel like you know now i've met some of the other girls who were in sydney and even at the event on wednesday night i went to where cheryl cortese was there and there was a few girls um like there was a couple of girls from Shani's team and stuff. Like one of the girls came to my house on Thursday. I was like, I really just need to make sure that I'm doing more events, like live events. That for me, I think is going to be key. And then also we had the idea of doing an event that is like a empowered woman's event. That's just at value. Um, and then doing other business events. And that I sort of, I feel like that could be, I'm excited about that. So I was like, if I can keep that momentum going, that will be, and, and slowly start to focus on getting more people in Sydney going. Um, that, that I think that's what I need to keep, keep momentum. And so I know that you and I spoke about your kind of goal for the next 12 months, but maybe yeah. just talk a little bit more about that for the others. Yeah. So I was, I was going, okay, how do I, because for me, I always have always struggled with levels or like hitting a goal. And I don't know whether it's because I have judged myself and been really harsh on myself when I haven't hit it or I haven't done what I thought. And it was all about me. Like I was making it about me. So now, and now I'm like, this is why I wasn't getting it because it wasn't, I was making it about me. Not, I wasn't making it about who can I help. Um, and so I shifted it to, okay, how many women can I help earn? And we, took, we came up with, say, can I help five women make $500 consistently in the business? And what sort of difference would that make in their life? And that's sort of now my next goal. It's like, okay, can I help five women make $500 a month? And what sort of difference would that make? And to a lot of people, that's a massive difference. Like, um, so that's my next goal, I think, is let's see. So I'm not, I'm not going to focus so much on the um, level, on the achievement for myself and just see how that goes, I think. Yeah. And I guess, um, you know, maybe another thing just to consider um, if the live events, for, you know, who knows, sometimes circumstances come up and you kind of things happen, you can't. Yeah. Um, you know, having a goal that you have in your mind of, you know, one or two events a month or whatever is realistic. Yeah. <clears throat> if you're finding that that's not enough and you want to keep that connection, I've really just kind of realized yet again, um, doing something like this and doing an online event is a really effective way to create community and closeness too. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. so definitely if that's something that you want to do, that's something that I want to start doing again. So just as a little add on and something that would help all of us grow as well. Um, yeah. Anything else that anybody wants to ask Janet? <laughs> you good? <laughs> um, Kate, can you speak while you're driving? Is this a good time for you or later? Later. Five minutes. Okay. Um, who wants to go next? Jade? Okay. I'll just unmute yourself, hon. Okay, so um, for me, can you hear me okay? I've got um, can you turn up your volume just a little bit? Is that better? Yeah. Okay, um, so yeah, before going into conference, I was kind of dipping my toe um, and I was a bit, I was still kind of, I, I wasn't all in, I was sort of still, you know, weighing up a little bit. Um, and conference, as you all assured me, it was just blew my mind. <laughs> um, and it was just, yeah, it's just incredible. Um, and I felt really, um, it gave me a lot of reassurance and it, it just, it brought it to life because it was really nice seeing the company um, be so, like, good eggs and, like, passionate about it as well. They're not just, you know, a head office that's you know behind the scenes and, and, and not really caring like they all seem to really care and that was really reassuring mm. um 
and I also loved hearing from um, Tamara and Dave mm -hmm. um, because I do believe in the products 100% but I think in day-to-day -day life when you're out of the community it's you're, it, it's easy to forget how amazing they are when you're not surrounded by hearing that all the time mm -hmm. so I think for me it's really important to keep my keep, to keep on top of that belief um, and their speeches were like incredible for that and mm. um, because I think something that I've been really wary of is um, because so I've, I'm not sure who knows but I've been vegan for like two and a half years and I became vegan for the animals nothing to do with health mm. at all and um, I've just sort of got into the health things as, as a you know after doing my research and things like that so I've been really um wary about giving me I don't want to give the wrong impression that um to be vegan you have to be on supplements and that sort of thing so that's been a real you know that's been in the back of my mind because I do you know love the animals um and but hearing their two speeches it just I was like that is everything I needed to hear that was it, it was just amazing because I was like it's just it's common sense and it yeah it was just that it got really I minded that was incredible. Um, I think my take home messages were just it's so important to have passion and spirit and um, just like, yeah, just, yeah, be, yeah, be passionate about it and drive that into consistent, um, consistent actions, you know, consistency is key. Um, and you've got to like, I've put here, you've got to feel your best life in order to live your best life and I think that's 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 something that I always try to do but that really just brought it home to me so that conference just sort of like collected a formally send <laughs> um which is fab um and in terms of my goals um I want to stay close to the fire I really agree with Jen I think that's so important because it's so hard to like when you you know get back into day-to-day -day life and you kind of move away from it a little bit but you know why would you I don't want to move away from something that makes me feel so like you know warm and fuzzy inside now mm. um and for me it would be so so cool to be on stage like that would be so cool mm. Mm. but that's just like a cool dream that's not like a you know that's exactly what I need to be but that would be fun um but for me it's about I want to help increase my own Sort of wellness and vitality and that sort of thing that would be great because mm. I already feel so much better mm. but I want to I want that to be a goal as well throughout the year mm. um but for me it's about making consistent changes so it doesn't it, I almost don't really care where I get to in the year as long as I'm well I will be still here but you know to me yeah. it's about being consistent throughout the year getting to conference next year and knowing that I've stuck with it and you know, being consistent and change them of my life. That'll go hand in hand with making better habits in my own life, if that makes sense. Mm. And so that's my goal, sort of being consistent. Yeah. Which might be a bit wishy washy, but and yeah. No. I feel like that'll be a good foundation for me. I actually I love that. I really love that. And I think that, you know, um I think I don't know if Janet feels this way, but you know, when I first got started, it felt like things were a bit more rah rah. Um, and you know, it's kind of scaled back. And I think as our leadership has matured and as our leadership has developed, um, you know, now we are hearing just stay in the game, make it your goal yeah. to be here in a year, make it your goal yeah. to be on the products, make it a goal to be yeah. healthier than, you know, when you got started and, yeah. you know, we kind of go, sometimes we can tend to go, Oh, really? Is that it? But yeah. that's actually really huge. And you know, if you do stay consistent, if you do continually focus on being the best version of you, you will yeah. naturally attract um, good things into your business. And yeah. I don't think it's a pipe dream for you to walk the stage as SC at all. You know, if you keep a hold of the vision of, you know, staying close to the fire, caring for yourself, yeah. continuing to grow, you're just going to attract more people to the mission. And it's not yeah. something that's stressing you out, but I just think that you're opening yeah. up the possibility 
And I think that that's a really amazing space to be in. So yeah. I actually think that's perfect. I don't really, yeah. there's not, there's not much that I would even add. Like, um, I think, you know, it, it's clearly sounds like you got a lot out of Anthony's clothes of feeling your future feelings now. Yeah. Um, and just really keeping that as part of your vision. So yeah. I think that's amazing. Does anybody else have anything to ask or add? No? All right, awesome, thank you. Um, Kate, are you putting your hand up? Are you ready? On, do you want me to unmute you? Hold on, just one, one minute. One minute? I was okay. going to class. I'll Sorry, tell you what, we'll, we'll go over to Narelle maybe, and then we'll come back, yep. okay? Come on, come see your teachers. Um, okay, Narelle, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi all. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm probably a lot like a lot of the other people um, that have already spoken. Um, okay. Yeah, it's the sense of community was really re reinforced, I think, at conference um, and feeling that whatever we do, we're worthy of um, acceptance in that community um, mm. and belief in myself that I can achieve. Mm. um what yeah um just achieve um whether it's a small stepping stone or um decide to jump in full hack <laughs> um yeah. i guess with previous jobs in hospitality people always end up wanting me to be supervisor but i never feel confident enough because the training hasn't been um consistent um in those first couple of jobs you get and then then you never know if you actually are good enough to make those steps but i find that with this company even yeah you feel more secure that you'll have that support from the people above you to move forward um so yeah um yeah um what else did i have um yeah. So like, yeah. And yeah, I really enjoyed Dave's speech. He was just like really inspiring. Um, just how he is just determined to jump into things that are, seem a little bit crazy, but Hey, let's, you know, we've got to all be a little bit crazy, I think in life sometimes and just jump in and have that fun. <sighs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I was just going to say, I don't want to move past that. Um, like I didn't want you to go straight into goals. I'm curious because mm. I could see a real shift. Mm. Like, you know, I've, I've met you and since seen you for a while, but yeah. when I saw you at conference, you actually looked like a different person to me. And when yeah. I saw you that second morning, mm. it was like a light that had turned on. And so I just, if you want to talk about it, I'd be curious to know kind of, maybe how you felt, I don't know, even about this opportunity prior to conference and then, you know, what, what it was that really was that shift for you? Um, I think still even coming into conference, I was maybe a little bit like Jade, sort of just tipping the toes, not really 100% confident in myself and being able to, but then hearing people like even Sophie talking about like, you know, she came here, she had no one and then has been able to build that network and community and friendship friendship above all else is most important kind of thing and mm -hmm. having those people around you to love and support you no matter if you only do a little bit or mm -hmm. you want to mm -hmm. go full hog. I think, um, mm -hmm. yeah, her sort of talk about that was really, really cool and everything. So um, I think that's where my shift changed just hearing. I think, yeah, like it wasn't all sunshine and roses and all that sort of stuff, but it, um knowing yeah if you just keep keep moving forward you can achieve things and don't let the bad times knock you down too much and just get back up yeah mm. Mm. yeah so i think that's sort of yeah my shift sort of came from that sort of just yeah it was sort of like yeah you're just sort of hearing people just constantly sort of repeating the same kind of stories but in different ways yeah mm. I definitely feel in my observation, um, you know, you've experienced a beautiful relationship with Carrie and the support and friendship yeah. there. 
Yeah. But I really had the sense that you could sense that you were part of something greater. It yeah. wasn't just, you know, this wasn't just a little side gig that you and Carrie work on every now and again, but that yeah. this was actually a place, place where you feel like you're actually enough. Yeah. Um, I guess even my partner, Rob, he sort of, when he was a kind of a little bit skeptical about it, but coming to like um, the meeting and everything that we had, and he's just looking into it and seeing different things. And he's like, yes, the community of people is going to be good for you more so even than the business side of things. It's that, yeah, sense of self-worth and yeah, community around it. Yeah, definitely is. And he's sort of like, yeah, that's what you need compared to, yeah, just being, going to work and sort of, yeah, you're sort of friends with people at work, but then you're kind of not either. Mm. Not necessarily mm. strong commitments. You know, you move around a lot of, like I do, <laughs> I, mm. or I have, and you kind of make friends, but then you kind of, like, if you leave, then it doesn't mean that those friends, friendships are going to stick so much. Whereas this is kind of like you end up with friends all over, which you might necessarily see in person so much, but mm. they're still there on the other end of a phone or Zoom call. Definitely. Yeah, so I and I, I think kind of one thing that I, mm. one thing that I hope happened for you guys, and you know, it wasn't something that I said, but the sideline relationships that you develop with people like, Janet is a really special person. You know, you're all very special to me, but you know, a conference was how I forged a relationship with, with Janet. You know, I only knew her from seeing, you know, being on trainings, being on webinars. And it sounds weird that you can like connect with people in that space, but like, I really encourage you guys, um, you know, community doesn't have to be your next door neighbors. It doesn't have to be your local girls. Community is where you feel kindred. And so I just really encourage you even as you attend trainings you know starting banter with people you know there's other girls like Janae or Corinne or just people that I would observe and I would just be like I like what they're doing and I would just message them and I would just say hey you know I love what you said on training the other night and just you know creating more connection because we're all here I think we're all here for connection you know there's a lot of other reasons but connection is so important um, and it's definitely part of this journey and it makes it rewarding um, so I'm really, I'm really glad that you felt that. Yeah. Can I just say something, Michelle, yeah. you walked up to me and you were like, we are going to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. I don't even remember doing that, but yeah. 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 Well, you know what? I, anyway, I think that's all. <laughs> one thing I want to say is that, um, you know, we all know what it's like to be, think back when you were a little girl, okay? We all came from different places. Um, we all had different lives. It happened for us at different eras. Um, but when I was a little girl, um, we moved six different times before I was eight years old. So my drill was I would put on roller skates and I would knock on doors and I would say, hi, my name's Michelle. Do you have any friends I can play with? And when I found those friends, it was like the best thing ever. And I wasn't usually the person that was like, hey, you're going to be my friend. But someone did do that to me when I was in um, sixth grade. She came up to me and she said, we're going to be friends. I've never even met her. We're going to be friends and you're coming to my birthday party. It's Friday and it's a sleepover. And I was just like, okay. So, you know, life is really short. We're not little girls with skate roller skates anymore. And when you see something in someone and you really love that and, you know, I challenge you, like, this is one of the greatest things about this community. Like, what did you say? That's what you said to me. Yeah. Let's be best friends. Yeah. Like this is, you know, this has come into your life at this time for a reason. So be open to all that's available in that. Um, so I love that. But um, tell me, Narel, tell me about 12 months. What do you think that might look like for you? Well, um, <clears throat> I just want a little bit more financial freedom. Like I know, again, Rob's older than me. He's 12 years older than me. So I want to take pressure off him to have to, you know, that he can start to enjoy and that we've got the financial freedom to be going over and visiting our grandbabies whenever we feel, you know, if we sort of go, 
we've got a free weekend. Let's have a look at flights. Bang, book flights, head over there and see them. Mm. Um, so we've got, yeah, a two, about, she's two week old grandbaby and wow. an 18 month old. And then we've got a step grandbaby that's, oh. um, she'll be seven soon. So, wow. you know, it, it's, it'd be nice, even though now we've moved from Perth to here to be close to my family, we still want to be close to mm. the kids and the mm. grandbabies and things like that. So yeah, it'll be nice to be able to have that like financial, a little bit more financial freedom and know that, yeah, we can jump on a plane and not have to stress about being back for nine o'clock Monday morning to start work. We, you know, we've do, you, do you know what that looks like? Do you know, do you have a, a figure in mind? Um, like if I'm, even if it's that like $1,000, $2,000 a month that I know I'm getting in, um, on top of, even if I am still doing my part-time thing and that knowing that you've got that extra thousand, even a thousand dollars a month to be able to know that that can just go into the savings accounts to, yeah. And then like, yeah, we've got my wedding coming up in October and we haven't sort of discussed honeymoons or anything like that yet because we're just doing the wedding first and then next year we'll be going on the honeymoon so just to know that even if that is you know we're making savings towards that in six months time after the wedding we know that we've got a nice little nest egg that we can just go and enjoy whatever we decide to do for that um so yeah just i guess those sort of yeah knowing yeah even if i'm working still Hey, I don't mind hospitality is great in some days. And then yeah. you don't know how many hours you're going to get when you're only a casual. So yeah. to know that there's X amount of dollars and then everything else on top of that's just a bonus kind of thing. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we can definitely chunk yeah, that down. I sort of yeah, wrote on the wall. <laughs> what did you write on the wall? I wrote that, you know, um, to be SC, but, you know, um, and, but to make sure that it's being kind, being loved and committed mm-hmm. and community sort of mm. yeah mm. is awesome yeah that's beautiful thank you <laughs> kind love committed community okay and cool just hopefully the committed isn't the other way <laughs> it's a positive way it's not the lunatic i promise we silence him um cool well thank you um kate let's hop over to you because i know you've got dance class so i'm gonna Go ahead and unmute yourself if you can, Kate. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey. Yeah, sorry. She just um, fell over in dance class. That was great. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> She's okay. She's okay. okay. She's back. Back in the game. Like your mom. Oh, keeps going. <laughs> exactly. She just gets up and keeps moving. Um, what stirred for you, honey, when you came to conference? Um, it just brought everyone on um social media to life like it was so surreal it was like I know you but I don't know you like we mm. haven't met officially but like I feel like we are so connected and so mm. that was so cool because it kind of made us get deeper with each other quicker mm. like everyone kind of connected and then also mm. having the Bondi event a few weeks before it was mm. a bit of a push for all of us to pull it together but um actually that made me feel like oh I knew some people you know when you go to a a new place and you're like I'm not going to know anyone mm. but knowing that like I had a few girls that I knew was like oh that's cool like mm-hmm. you know I've met you Michelle once before but yeah like yeah I feel like we're like best buddies because we've been like mm. talking all the time yeah um on social media but yeah so um I guess for me that community um my biggest thing was that I'm a busy mum businesswoman everything and I love all that but I was like I want to create more magic moments for my family and my mm. friends mm. um and was consciously making effort of that this year since I joined the business and I have I did a bucket list and I said these are things I want to do this year um and I've just been seeing them all come to life for the last six months and I've just been having so much fun like you know you can kind of lose that when you become an adult and be responsible paying bills mortgages kids and you forget to have those fun moments Mm. um so for me yeah it's all about creating those magic moments now which I it's funny how when you focus on it, then you start to attract all these things, mm. which I'd never thought of. Um, mm. I also quite happy at being a side hustle. Like I'm not, my goal is never to it to take over my traditional business because mm-hmm. I love that too. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it's just about bringing other women on the journey that want to create side income like myself and showing them how to do it. Um, 
I would like to get, you know, the five one every month. Like that would be my goal to have five quarters and one new teamy. Great um, goal. Great goal. My biggest challenge is getting the teamies. <laughs> um, but I know once I get them, you guys will help me train them up and everything. But um, yeah, so that's the goal. But I've got a few in the pipeline, so hopefully that will come off. And um, I love challenges as well because that gets a lot of people back on track and it gets me back on track and more focused for my health and well-being. Um, yeah. Um, I love your energy and I love, um, you know, that you've got drive and, you know, you, you're not afraid of a challenge. Um, I yep. do think that we need to change a little bit of your language. So I'm going to call you out <laughs> on that. Um, okay. When we talk about team, we can all say it. So I'm not picking on you, but saying get team. Just like you're attracting these things into your life that you want more of, that's what you're going to do. And you're good yeah. at that. You, you just yeah. told us that you made a bucket list and that, you know, the, all these things are kind of coming to pass because you're focusing, you know, on these things that you want in your life. So yeah. I'd encourage you to think about the women that you yeah. want to become part of your community because yeah. that's going to excite you and that's going to energize you. When you think you've got to get something, it yeah, feels true. like really hard work and it is no fun. And yeah, it's almost like a little bit of a, a block, I think. Um, mm. The other thing that I think is interesting, and again, I'm not here to convince anybody of anything, but don't be afraid of what this business could become for you. Don't be afraid yeah. that it could take over Taylor Care because Tamara Hunter is still a fertility doctor who's on the news in Perth with an NMD. That's true. Class. That's so true. I'm sure she never <laughs> set down her stethoscope um, to do Juice Plus, but over the years, she's an NMD. So it doesn't yeah. mean that you have to be an NMD in four years' time, but don't limit that you, at some point you may have an NMD business you know, and okay. still be doing tailor care because, yeah. you know, one thing that we all have to, to really get our heads around with this business is that we don't do this by ourselves. What an yeah, NMD represents community. is five fired up people that are doing this with you. So wow. okay. the, the burden is not on you to be six people. The burden on you is, it's not a burden. It's you, you be you. And you attract uh -huh. five people that want what you want. Yeah, true. It's a totally different, you know, ball of wax or whatever, kettle of fish or whatever you want to say. <laughs> um, yeah, very true. So that's just, that's just, I don't know, that just comes to my mind for you. And I think that um, I love the goal of, I think, I think if all of us are interested in having consistency with our paycheck, 5-1 um, is a great goal. So, you know. Yeah thinking about that consistently, even when we're not getting those extra bonuses is, is a great, is a great thing to kind of think about. Um, yeah. I see more the NMDs and all those people that are doing it successfully and they seem to do that five one is their kind of goal each month. Yeah. And when you break it down like that, it seems more easy. Achievable. You know? um, yeah. I think sometimes there can be a misconception and, and this can happen as well. Um, sometimes yeah. there can be a conception, misconception that when you become an MD, you can just sit back and everybody else does your business. <laughs> um, but, you know, as evidenced by people like Linda, like Anthony, like Kate, like yeah. they're, they're still doing what we're doing. You know, do they have to do it at the same level? No, because there comes a tipping point and you've got a lot of team and that's kind of carrying you. But, um, you know, you do have to stay a personal qualified business. So, um, you know, that's, that's true. So they're still getting new customers in as well. Yeah. 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 Um, and I just like, um, so I love that Mitch and Mills, they were really good on um, mindset and breaking down like how we view goals and how we, and our self-talk and um, the limiting beliefs that maybe we have on ourselves or that people around us have put on us mm -hmm. um, that we can't do it all, you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I love that they kind of challenged on that and, breaking the like visualizing feeling the goal but then chunking it backwards you know so reverse that logical engineer. side mm -hmm. um, reverse engineer and i feel like um that's my my um strategy i'm going to use for both businesses and work out how um and then present that to my husband and see what he <laughs> so yeah that's my goal is to show them that you know we can 
we can do it, but I've got to go in with the logical side, like the facts and the figures versus um, the feelings. Cause that's what Mitch was saying is, you know, to appeal to a man, we need to go in with facts and numbers and figures and not so much about, oh, I feel this and I want to do this. Um, it's more detailed than that. And I think that will keep me focused as well. What excites you about this? Um, I just love, I'm only ever promote something that I believe in and that I love. Um, I love the community side of it. I love the connection and I love the products. So for me, it's easy to promote something that I love. And most people would only, a lot of people are signing up because they're like, we're not sure hundred percent. We've seen mixed reviews or whatever, but they're like, if you, are, if you believe in this, Kate, we'll follow you. Like girls from high school that have just been following me on social media, like since I've been posting consistently. Mm. Mm. And I was like, oh, wow. Like they trust me that much, you know, mm. like friends from 20 years ago are trusting me because they're like, if you believe in this, then I believe in it. And I'm like, wow, I didn't realize I had that much influence. You no, know, you are, from people. Yeah, you are. You're an influencer, a natural, you yeah. know, you're a strong, natural born leader and what you do, you walk, you talk and talk, you whatever. Um, so <laughs> definitely. But um, does anybody have anything to ask or Feedback to Kate. Any coaching moments? <laughs> All good. All right, honey. Yeah, yeah. And I um, my goal is so in a year's time, I'd love to be at least SC and have a team around me. Maybe SSC, we'll see. And then um, we want to go August next year for my husband's fortieth to um Europe mm -hmm. and my daughter's fifth birthday. So I really want to mm -hmm. be able to saved up the money to be able to go and have a really epic holiday with them. Um, and you already, and, you already found out what that costs, right? Yeah, roughly. Yeah. It's about 20 grand we need. So <laughs> it's going to be a lot. Um, but I want to do it really, you know, nice hotels, you know, go to Disneyland, do all that. So it's really big like that. We, I want to be able to do it and do it well because we haven't done many holidays since we had a business and a child. So it would be really a, a big deal for us to do it. We'll need to talk, this will be a, a bit of a longer conversation um, at another time, but we need to talk about how much of that you want to create um, and from, you know, what, what aspect of this business you want to create with that. Because you yeah. have, you've got multiple streams of income. So yeah. let's see what could be great about what you could do with this business to get you there. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. It's very Thank exciting. You. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna mute you and Rach. What stood in you? Unmute you. Oh, I'll unmute you. There you go. All right. Um, I think it was just the transparency of the the speakers, the NMVs up on stage. Mm -hmm. um, this conference didn't really feel as glossy to me as previous mm -hmm. conferences. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I like that. Um, you know that everyone's going on a journey and there is going to be ups and downs mm. you know you're going to lose friends you're going to make friends mm. um so yeah i think that was really reassuring to me you know just to keep going you know and probably not to give up as easily and just to work my just to work out my own way of doing this business yeah Um, I'm just trying to think of, and I think my, um, you know, we were talking yesterday and I think my why is changing, like my mum's got to have a knee replacement mm. and I don't think her, um, private health cover is going to cover that. Mm. She hasn't had that confirmed, but just from what I've seen, I don't think, mm. um, you know, she's probably going to have to pay for the full op, op. So it'd be nice to be able to help them out as well. Mm. Absolutely. Um, I want to ask you a question. Um, as well as doing some travel. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about that too, because not everybody would know that you went on the Camino and, and kind of what that was for you. Um, yeah, like, 
I suppose the thought of doing that walk had grown on me over probably a four year period, just from hearing other people talk about it and hearing other people, other people's experiences. Um, so yeah, I like, I make these decisions to do things and I suppose I can be pretty determined. Like if I really want to do something, I'll, I'll get there somehow. Like, in 2013, I wanted to go to Israel. And Murray's like, no, you're not going to, you know, we can't do that. And of course. <laughs> How did you make it happen? Um, yeah, it was just determination, I suppose. Yeah. So do you think that that might be one of your superpowers? Yeah. Well, I suppose I don't. Every day, I don't think I'm a determined person, but if there's something that I really want to do, you know, I will get there. Like mm. with this walk, um, you know, I said to Mary, I really want to do it. Like, you know, and it just, I just kept thinking about it. Mm. So I did get there in the end, but it was right. just for me, it was just so good in having that alone time. Um, just being by myself, being in nature and just spending time with God, like, you know, because we live in such a busy world, it's hard to set that time aside. Mm. So, mm. And did anything shift um, with you and Murray when you talked about the walk? Like, um, or was it just that that was a focus for you and it just... It sounds very kind of magical how it kind of happened. Yeah, I think, I don't know, like, like I didn't really go into any deep conversations about it with Murray, but, you know, just probably the day-to-day -day experiences and the challenges I faced. Like, one day I didn't think I could keep going. My backpack was too big and there was just too much weight in there and it wasn't sitting properly on my hips and... I thought, I'm just going to have to stay in this town that night. Um, so I'd walk 15 kilometres that day and I had a break and I thought, it's just too busy here today. I'm just going to keep walking a little bit further, get out of town. And then I ended up walking like another 15 kilometres. So I did like nearly 30 that day um, after, you know, nearly giving in. So, yeah. So what did you learn about yourself? Well, I suppose if I really want to get somewhere, I, I can. And if I'm determined enough. Mm. So, yeah. I love that. I you mean, you know, you are, you're a very, um, you're a de very determined person. And I actually think the other thing that I recognize in you is that you're resourceful. Um, you know, it, you had to find more than just to, I mean, determination was what you got, what got you 30 Ks that day when you only wanted to do 15, but you had to draw on some resources. Um, and so I guess I love that I can see you discovering a lot of the strengths that have always been there. Yeah. Um, how do you see that impacting um, kind of your relationship with this business and what it might mean to you? I suppose I really need to have like a clear, a clear focus, a clear goal and just draw on that determination to make it happen. So I suppose my short term goal would be to do the five in one um, and just to break it down mm. instead of looking at the big picture. Mm. I'm more of a detailed person anyway, so... Yeah. yeah, I think it's really, yeah, I think it's really important. Um, you know, some people are visionary and they have this whole thing and they're kind of the end goal is the thing that really excites them. And for some people having some really big thing at the end freaks them out because they're like, holy hell, how would I even ever start getting yeah. there? So having a roadmap and having break, you know, little chunks that you can break down and even reflecting, you know, with your experience with getting yourself to Israel or getting yourself to the Camino, 
there would have been practical things that you would have done behind the scenes. Um, you know, even before you actually knew that you were going to be able to do it, you were doing things to prepare yourself. You would go to meetings or you would meet people or you would research something or you would buy something or you would, there were little steps. You didn't just yeah. say, I'm going to Israel and the next day you went, you know, so reflecting on that and thinking about, um, yeah, exactly what you said. Just doing those, just doing the things. The five one is a great thing to do. You know, I listened to a thing with Eric Warre that I popped in the group. Um, and it was around, um, you know, that most people are more comfortable having a tick list because in life, in traditional business or school or everything, we used to be giving instruction. And, you know, Rachel, I would say of you, as I would say of most of us, like, um, you know, we're a good student. We know how to follow instructions. You know, if somebody tells me something to do, I can do it. And so making it something that um, we've got those steps towards that big goal um, will make that something that's more exciting. Um, and even if that focus is, you know, your next trip back to the Camino and breaking down financially what that means and then breaking down what that looks like in a month to do, that's going to excite you. Yeah. I think it's all about keeping that excitement. Does anybody else have anything to add or ask um, for Rach? All good? Um, thank you, Rach. Um, so I guess I'll just share. Um, I don't even know. It feels like it was a million years ago now conference. <laughs> But I have to say that um, something that really stirred in me was um, that was my third conference. And, you know, one of the things that was a huge thing that stirred in me was that, um, you know, Rachel's been there all three years. And that's just really special for me. Um, you know, I'm the girl with the roller skates and I'm always looking for friends to play with. <laughs> um, so it was really, really beautiful for me. Um, to have had this vision of, you know, being around a community of women that can do this, you know, like a group within our group. And so to, to look at those two rows of people that, you know, are personally friends of mine um, and in the business and doing this together, like that was, that was something that stirred in me. And I just thought, like, I want more of that. I want more women to come into our fold. I want more people to come and feel like they're a part of something. And just that community that we've created and that we're creating was something that really, really stirred in my heart um, on that, on, on one level. And, um, you know, on another level, many of you would know that, um, you know, I recently had to go back to the States um, because my friend lost her son. And the reason that I said yes to this business is, for a plane ticket. And that reason has never, ever, ever changed. Um, you know, I'm always wanting to be able to get on that plane whenever I want to, um, not just for myself, but for my family. And um, I suppose just that reminder that none of us knows how long we're here. And I have a debutante ball for my 16 year old son tonight. He's only got one more year of school. And I just kept thinking, like, I need to actually commit to doing this in a way that helps me to get those magic moments, those family trips, those things when we're actually all still together. Like, you know, I don't know, you know, my son is pretty driven. He's got a lot of vision for things that he wants to do. Like, I don't know how many, like, family trips we're going to have, you know, and I just kind of think I owe it to myself and to my family to, for us to be able to have more of that. So whatever I need to do to get out of the way to make that happen, I just need to do. So um, that was just something that stirred in me, those two things probably. And it both scares and excites me. And I can't remember now who said, maybe it was Carrie. She said she'd love SSC and, um, you know, I would love to have an NMD business. It's not going to break my heart if I'm not there in 12 months time, but I don't 
have any good reasons to tell myself why I shouldn't be able to do that. Um, this is my full-time job. So um, if I can get organized and if I can utilize and leverage my resources, um, you know, I just think who am I to stand in the way? So it's just kind of inspired me to get really clear on what that looks like. And then like Rachel said, just do it a little, little bit at a little bit at a little bit. And if I'm doing my little bit every month, um, wherever I get in the end, it's fine with me. As long as I'm committing to, you know, trying to do um, what it is to get there. So anyway, <laughs> you guys are awesome. Um, so anyway, that's mine. Anybody can ask me any questions. I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> but um, for anybody that's going to end up watching this as a recording, I really, really hope that you guys get inspired by the vulnerability of everybody that has shared and just realize that, you know, we're all so similar. We all, you know, have moments of total self-doubt. We all have moments of walking away. Lauren, the other day, Lauren Lee was sharing on a call just the week leading up to conference. She was like, can I even do this? And like, she's a 75 club NMD. Like, so it's normal. Like when we have those moments, um, I think the best thing to do is to dip in and just be real and be raw and be like, guys, I don't think I can do this. And then let, let, let us pour into each other. And, and I've written down what everybody said. So, you know, we can go back and just remind each other something I'd like to do soon is I'd really like to have like a vision board kind of party. Like we could just have zoom on and we could all be in our own places and putting together our vision boards. But I really want a, a picture of each of you guys and kind of, you know, I want to know your why and I want to know kind of the vision of what you want in the next 12 months so that every day when I wake up, I'm like, okay, you know, Narelle's looking towards her honeymoon, you know, dream destination. How can we encourage Narelle today? You know, like how much more fun and more meaningful is what we do if we can keep one another's goals in mind? Like how much more will that drive you to stay in the game? It could so, be good to like write that, write it up in a document as well, Michelle. Yeah, definitely. Um, the other thing is sometimes I think accountability, like if you feel like you need accountability to someone, maybe connect, like find someone to be accountable to each other, like buddy up mm. so that you're, you know, if you say you're going to do, like tell that person what your top goal is for that week and then, you're accountable to them. Mm. I think that's the other thing that is mm. needed so that you, you've got to put your money where your mouth is. Mm. For sure. Um, and it might be maybe in a form of a Facebook group where each Monday morning or Sunday night you write what your goal is for the week. Um, because I know a lot of coaching groups, like business coaching groups do that, like Koo and Ray does that. Um, where you've got to write your, what your top, your top goal or top three goals are, whatever it is. Mm. Hold on just one second. I'm sorry. I'm going to mute myself. There's things going on in the background, like my family's yeah. leaving. I need to find out what they're doing. Keep talking. Okay. That's all right. Um, so, but you've got to, for, in order for that to work, you actually need to then come back and say, actually, I didn't do this. And then it's like, okay, well, why didn't, you meet that goal was it unrealistic or what was it so you've got to say if you achieve what you said you were going to achieve from the week before and then set your goal for the next week so I don't know what the best way to do that is in terms of whether you do it with a partner or whether you do it in a group because we as human beings are herd animals and we like to belong and so if the herd is doing something and you're not doing what the herd is doing, you need to either step up. <laughs> You've got to step up to be part of the herd. Mm. Um, so that could be another thing. I don't know. Everyone give a bit of feedback of what you guys think about that, but I just had that idea. I love it. I think we should, um, I know there's probably a few that might need to hop off. So maybe we should keep yeah. a chat going about it and just see what yeah. people think. But I think that that's key. I think it's really important. Um, 
it definitely is really helpful. Um, yeah, everybody sounds like they like that. So let's just kind of okay. workshop it and see what it might look like. And I also think it's something that we need to, um, I don't know, you can give me feedback on this. I feel like it's definitely something people need to opt in if that's what they're ready yeah. for, because yeah. there's some people that could get really scared and be yeah. like, Ooh, I don't know, you know, so that might not energize some people. It might yeah. kind of turn them off. Yeah. Turn them off. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just always thinking about what I've been learning personally is when I feel excited or energized about something, I move towards it. Mm. When I don't, I hide. Mm. So finding what that is for different people is going to be key as well. Yeah, totally. Well, I love all of you dearly. And thank you so much for taking time Saturday morning. And I'm going to pop on Lisa's recording in the group because she wanted to be part of it too. Um, and hopefully others will pop their thing in after they watch this. But um, yeah. I just, I'm really, I'm fired up. I'm excited. Um, I think we all have our tickets for next year. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Cool. Thanks, Michelle. All right. Love you guys. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.